Thank you. Uh, I would like also to thank uh, the organizers for the opportunity to present my work on uh, probing the dynamics of many body systems, which was performed uh, together with Eli Bakai and uh, David Kessler, as well as with the students Quan Cheng Liu and Rui Yin. Uh, the idea is to probe a many body system, which is very complex. Uh, the, the concept itself uh, will be quite general, but I will give you also some examples uh, how to use this uh, concept. So let me uh, tell you the following. I mean, in, in the course of physics, we have learned if we have a compli uh, complex systems, and this is very often the case in uh, physics, we have to resort on statistical uh, uh, methods. And this is also what I would like to do here. Well, we remember that in, in the early uh, times of uh, statistical physics in the 19th century, uh, the idea was to uh, study systems where, which have states which are randomly occupied. So this is the, the foundation of uh, statistical physics as we learn it in, uh, in our courses. Then there was more recently the idea of complex uh, nuclei, for instance, where uh, the random matrix theory was applied to describe uh, generic features like uh, level spacing uh, in uh, complex uh, systems. And in this talk, I would like to uh, suggest a concept which is based on random dynamics, not on spectral properties like the random matrix theory, on spectral, uh, uh, on uh, uh, dynamic uh, properties. So let me start with the idea, with the motivation. So uh, many body systems are usually very simple models. Think of a Hubbard model or spin chains or something like that. But if we simulate this, if you uh, start with dynamics, with an initial state, we realize this uh, dynamics can be quite complex. And an example is shown here. We have a double well with, filled with N bosons. So this is a type of model as simple as possible, but not simpler. So the, the, the bosons uh, can tunnel uh, through this barrier from one well to the other. And during this uh, evolution, from starting from, let's say, all the particles are on the left, uh, we can just measure how many, uh, if all the particles are on the left or on the right well. And the dynamics is shown here. And surprisingly, due to interaction, this it looks quite complex. Uh, complex. Uh, and what is shown here is uh, the system with uh, 20 bosons. So we can see that there's, it's almost like a random walk. It's very erratic. And finally, I mean, it starts somewhere here at one and it, it ends up here in this uh, dynamics at this point. So in order to compare the theory, this is a, a deterministic problem because quantum mechanics is a, a deterministic given by the Schrodinger equation. So we, if we do measurements, uh, I think it's hopeless. So we have to re resort on a statistical approach here. And the idea is the following, we do measurements. So uh, we do measurements, what we can do is, okay, we start with the initial state psi naught and a, a state which we measure psi prime. And the opportunity, uh, the simplest way to, to do a measurement is just to, to prepare the system in psi naught and then uh, let the system evolve. And then measure at the time tk, uh, if the system uh, is, or the probability is that the system is in this state psi prime, which we want to uh, discover. So this way of uh, doing the measurement is based on unitary evolution. And we, we can repeat this measurement, I and mean, we can repeat the experiment with the identical systems and we measure at different times dk. And these times can be random uh, in order to establish a, a statistical theory. An alternative approach is to do repeated measurements on the same system. So we measure repeatedly by this projective measurement here given by this P, uh, the, if the system is uh, in the state psi prime. And then instead of having this unitary evolution for the, uh, for the probability at time T1 plus T2 plus uh, up to Tk, we have to consider this expectation value modulus squared. And as you can see, this is not a unitary evolution anymore. It's a non-unitary one because of the projectors, 
And th this is usually called the monitored uh, evolution. The interesting thing is, if you do a uh, stroboscopic measurements where all these time intervals are equal, there is a nice uh, theory uh, introduced by Grünbaum et al. some time ago, uh, that, uh, which is based on complex uh, application of complex analysis, which uh, um, uh, reveals very interesting uh, properties of this uh, monitored uh, evolution based on stroboscopic measurements. Okay, so we will discuss both uh, concepts of measurement. And let me start with the unit evolution. Uh, so we have this um, amplitude uh, for the me for measurement at uh, time tk. So at it, and from this amplitude, we can construct a, a matrix, which I will call here time correlation matrix, which is a product of these amplitudes at different times uh, tk, tk and tk prime. And this matrix is a Hermitian matrix, as, uh, it is, as you can see here. And it, it can be obtained from the experiment by interferometric uh, measurements given by these relations for the matrix elements, which are written here. And again, uh, as I said before, we now introduce uh, statistics by saying we can do, we can repeat this measurement again and again for diff and measure the, uh, the at time TK randomly. And then we average over these uh, measured times, this uh, time correlation matrix, it's the actual defini definition in the end of the time correlation uh, matrix that we average over all these uh, measured times and we obtain a, a matrix CK minus K1, K prime. The, so using this, uh, we uh, observe the following interesting property. We can, uh, formulate the problem now in terms of a specific uh, Hamiltonian in uh, spectral representation. So the, the uh, amplitude is now written as this uh, sum over all the uh, n plus one eigenvalues. So we assume we have an n plus one dimensional uh, Hilbert space. And here is this Q, uh, Q, QJ, this is the amplitude which is the overlap between the, uh, the initial state and the uh, measured state with respect to the uh, eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. Okay, when we average now uh, our quantity, I mean, we just consider the diagonal elements of the time uh, correlation matrix. Uh, I will focus on this. Uh, and of course, the uh, off diagonal elements also carry interesting information, but I will focus on the diagonal elements here. We, we observe, there's a separation of dynamical uh, uh, yeah, regimes. One is the uh, recurrent part, which is uh, independent of, of, of uh, time. So if we send k to infinity, we will get this part. And it is uh, based on the uh, terms in the sum when we average this, in the sum which uh, is based on the uh, lambda j, j diagonal elements and the lambda j, j diag diagonal elements of course are just uh, one as you can see here from this expression. And then we have this, this part here, which is independent of time, independent of k. And the other term is, is the um, exponential decaying expression with uh, respect to k. So it's exponentially decaying in time. This is the, this part uh, explicitly uh, given here. So we have a separation of the dynamics of in the into the uh, recurrent part, which is a, a static expression, and an exponential decaying part. And this is we should keep in mind. This is a consequence of the uh, time average, Me the, the averaging over the, the measured times. So to give you an example, what we can learn from this uh, concept, uh, I consider a two-side uh, bosonic Hubbard model, which is uh, uh, represents a bosonic Josephson junction. And uh, then we consider the case uh, without tunneling between this uh, is a tunneling between two sides and the tunneling is uh, switched to zero, then the eigenstates are uh, two for degenerate of, of this uh, Hamiltonian is given here. And then we turn on the, the tunneling and we observe that the, the system will evolve. So it is tunneled between these two sides. 
And uh, the, the dynamics is uh, shown here. So the green curve is without uh, averaging over the uh, time measurements. It's just the, the evolution, unitary evolution uh, before averaging. So it's quite erratic. The same here for the, this is for the, the return probability that the system goes back to the initial state. And this is for the uh, transition probability. So quite, the green curves are quite uh, erratic. But when we measure, we see exactly what I described before, namely a separation of the decay and a, a constant term which uh, stays to infinity. So we see this for the return as well as for the transition probability. An interesting thing is also that we can uh, observe um, um, special features which are associated with um, a degeneracy of uh, eigen uh, uh, energy levels. Uh, it is shown here, the return is the green, green again, and the, the violet, the purple is uh, the uh, transition um, probability. And there is a jump, uh, the certain value of U of this uh, characteristic parameter. And this is uh, associated, it is written already here, uh, by, uh, as a Hilbert space localization transition. So it means the system uh, undergoes a transition from ergodic to non-ergodic. So the, the system can, uh, in, in this regime for, for smaller u, for smaller interaction, the system can explore the entire Hilbert space, but at a critical uh, uh, interaction strength, it, it can only explore a part of the sub-Hilbert space of the original Hilbert space. And this is uh, called either Hilbert space localization or in, in some recent papers is also called Hilbert space fragmentation. It is similar in a sense to the uh, many body localization idea, except for the fact that it is based on non-random systems. So we don't need this order here. It's just it's a fact that this, the system by itself because of interaction uh, realizes only part of the uh, Hilbert space. So it breaks uh, explicitly the uh, ergodicity and this is, Apparently, even this relatively simple model, it's a phase transition, as is shown here. Okay, so the, another thing, another feature which is associated with this transition is that the decaying part, the time scale of the decay changes uh, drastically. So this is for the ergodic system, the decay is, is quite uh, strong, a dynamic decay, but because of the um, uh, uh, smallness of the level spacing in the uh, non-ergodic regime, we see there is a very, very uh, weak decay. So the, the decay is almost uh, flat. So this is what we can learn from this type of uh, 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 analysis based on averaging over random uh, times. Now let me switch to the monitored evolution, which I uh, mentioned before. So you can imagine Monitor evolution is something like uh, the, the uh, mo uh, quantum Monte Carlo sampling, but it is based here on a projective measurement, while the quantum Monte Carlo sampling is uh, not based on a projection. And therefore, there is some connection to the, the previous talks this morning uh, based on this monitored effect, which we can uh, create by different means here, in this case, by projective me measurements. And then what we find is, okay, we again have a transition amplitude as before, but now with this uh, operator, it's not a unitary anymore. Interesting thing is there is no recurrence in this case. So the, the, um, the, um, uh, the probability decays, always decays exponentially. Well, it's, that doesn't always decay. I should say it can increase, but then it decays eventually. And the sum over the, the modulus squared is always less uh, or equal to one. Uh, in, in order to study this situation, we introduce uh, the uh, Fourier trans uh, transformation of this amplitude. And uh, the, in the, the interesting point, which was already uh, observed in this uh, early work by Greenbaum et al., is that the, uh, this uh, Fourier transform amplitude is a unimodular function. So it just has just a phase. And the phase, of course, is a winding number. It's a it's an, um, um, many-valued function, as we will see in a moment. It is quantized, interestingly. So if we go around with the omega, the omega goes from 0 to 2 pi, 
uh, we go around, we, we have a, a quantization, which is equal to the dimension of the underlying Hilbert space. And uh, there are jumps if we have spectral degeneracies, which are the case, for instance, in for phase transition. So this is an example of, for a system of uh, two interacting bosons, and we see there the the degeneracies. Uh, either the winding number uh, of this multivalue function is, uh, uh, I think it's it's, it's uh, four, and the other one is, uh, one, two, I think it's two, or th yes, it's two, the, the red one. So uh, this means we have we discover an effect which is should be observable, of, of course, in the experiment uh, that the uh, winding number jumps when we uh, hit a uh, phase transition point based on this monitored uh, evolution. Uh, now we focus on the probability uh, for, for the return. So this is a sum is really one then, which means this initial, we will always uh, return to the initial state with uh, certainty. And the, uh, the average return time is just the winding number. And by calculation, it turns out this is dimensionality of the accessible Hilbert space. Uh, near these degenerate points uh, where this uh, n jumps, there, uh, there are strong fluctuations of this uh, uh, time k, for instance, by near phase transition. Now we switch to the random um, uh, measurement. So, so far, we did, we did the stroboscopic case. In the random measurement, now we see that the winding number fluctuates randomly. That's, uh, of course, uh, disappointing at the first point. The, for instance, here, the, for a two-level system, we calculated the winding number. It's uh, three in this case for the, for the return. And uh, it can also, for a different uh, realization of the uh, times, random times, it can be just one. So this means uh, there is some randomness now in, in our ensemble. But as I said in the beginning, we should average over the uh, measured uh, times. And if we do that, it turns out that this uh, um, winding number can be expressed by this uh, integral, which is uh, simply a Berry phase. And then uh, when we realize, and this is what we found in, in our work, uh, that the, the denominator is indeed one for this system, average over time, this, this phase. Then, of course, this very phase becomes a very simple expression, namely it becomes uh, n prime again, the, dimensional, the dimensionality of the accessible Hilbert space. So it jumps, of course, then we have Hilbert space uh, fragmentation. So the n prime depends or is an indicator in which uh, situation we are. Either we are in the uh, ergodic, where n uh, uh, prime is equal to the entire Hilbert space, or it is less. But it's always an integer. And the average uh, times, uh, the return times in this case, uh, are given by these expressions. I mean, this is in the number of measurements. In average, it's n prime equal to the, the winding number of the average system. Or the average return time is just the average uh, time step between uh, in, in, in measurements uh, times this uh, integer n prime dimensionality of the accessible Hilbert space. So the average uh, uh, system, again, is uh, quantized, as we saw in the stroboscopic case. So this is a, a good, sorry, uh, this is the good sorry, news. Klaus. And then, sorry, of Klaus, course, we can... can you wrap up? You are beyond your time already. By two OK, minutes. OK, then let me just, uh, OK, these are fluctuations. This is not important. And this is a, a summary to the, the, the stroboscopic is more or less uh, equal to the uh, random average uh, um, measurements or monitored uh, evolution. And with this, I uh, come to the conclusion. The random measurement times averaged reveals the separation of uh, recurrent k times in the unitary evolution and reveals topological invariance for the monitored evolution. And the mean return uh, time is proportional to the dimensionality of the Hilbert space, but this is important for experiments. And by this averaging, we also avoid accidental singularities. And the outlook is, uh, of course, construction of efficient measurement monitor, uh, monitoring protocols for uh, um, probing quantum systems and the design of quantum search algorithms, algorithms to uh, optimize um, the uh, search time. OK, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Klaus.
So the last question, the, the last talk is somehow joining the first one. Uh, are there questions? Are there? No, everyone seems to be very exhausted. Okay, if not, then maybe I will close here and we remain on time and go for coffee. Thank you very much, Klaus. Yeah, thank you, Christiane.